Hey guys, uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Mark here <coughs> at Saturday Morning Cartoons. Hope everybody is doing well. I got a little bit of a tickle in my throat if I start to uh, call. Uh, we're missing Rose. Rose is having internet problems, guys, and this is her show today. So uh, she's going to reboot and try to pop back in. Um, but what we're going to do, basically, let me bring up my partner in crime here. Uh, Rose, stop texting me, Rose. God, man. Yeah. <laughs> trying to run a show, woman. Anyway, <laughs> so, hey, say hello to Jerome. And like I said, I am I am here too. Uh, even my my co-hosts love to uh, bug me while I'm trying to do a show and they expect me <laughs> to go and read. And look who just popped up. It's like, good grief, woman. Yeah. Hello, good morning. Yeah. Wow, just skipped right in on us. <laughs> You're never this late. What's your problem today? Uh, we uh, had to reboot everything, this whole system. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, and, and, and it just didn't want to want to work for you today, huh? Panic, panic ensued. So, but here I am. Oh, I get it. I, I, I know exactly <laughs> what that feeling is like. So, um, uh, you you made it. Good grief. You know that that's uh, that was perfect timing. So you and I have a great show planned today. So I wanted to make sure I got in one way or another. <laughs> we, we, we figured that um, Jerome was ready to to jump in uh, mm -hmm. to bail you out. Um, you know, so look, I'm answering your messages on my phone right now. And it's like, <laughs> did you know that you dialed me? You dialed me, Mark. Yes, <laughs> I did. Like, yes, I did. I, I called you. Yeah, yes, you did. And I tried to call you back and I missed your call. I, I purposely ignored you because I, I figured as much. I'm like, oh, I've ticked off Mark now. Yeah, <laughs> the show started. I would have been on camera going, hello. You know, that's not like me, Mark. You know, it's going to be a real issue when I'm late. <laughs> Who's this again? <laughs> Rose, who? I'm sorry. Mark's not available right now. Try again. Okay. Anyway. So, um, good morning, guys. Hey, I see uh, Dina popped up. <coughs> well, I was going to let you two take over the entire show. Uh, I, I, you, you mostly will because I have been up since 2 a.m. And I have an absolute splitting headache. And I am just, every time I talk, my head vibrates. So mm, That's not good. Yeah. See, I think... Rose, I don't think he. I think it's just an excuse to him getting up at two. I think he just wanted to binge watch the Quinn Martin shows. No, yeah, you know? I know. <laughs> you know what I watch? I, I got these two channels that I that I I, I enjoy. One is movies uh, mm -hmm. with an exclamation point, and the other is Heroes and Icons. So, really? Yeah. So I'm bebopping back and forth between uh, Hill Street Blues and um, God, what's his name? Um, um, um. Um, John, Tom, um, now what's John Boy's name? John Boy? No, real name. Richard. Oh, Thomas. Richard, Richard. Thomas. I, I was calling him. Richard yeah. Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. I yeah, said there it we go. Times. Thomas. Okay. And it was Battle of the Planets, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Roger Corman. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is, i like, oh, my God. I remember the big boob spaceship. It's 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 the uh, magnificent seven in outer space. <laughs> it was hilarious. I'm and I'm even, like even Robert Vaughn was in that film. Yes, Robert Vaughn was in it as as pretty much uh, playing out as magnificent seven yes. again. <laughs> and I'm sitting here looking at that. I said, wait a minute, isn't that the turtle head from um um I forget the other movie. I can't even think of movies right now. What wasn't George Papard in that or or, or yeah, something George like that? George Papard was a cowboy with his own space, and it was like the, like you said, the magnificent <laughs> in movies. And I was freaking out. I'm like, holy crap. And of course, <clears throat> we can get back to sleep after that. <laughs> even during that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wasn't Sybil Danning in that also? I guess that was Big Boob Sybil Danning. Yeah. I didn't really recognize her. <laughs> Seven civil Danny. Oh I my. really didn't recognize her, and and it was it was like the stupid thing ended with uh, <laughs> John Saxon, who's the bad guy in there, basically saying, "I could have lived forever," and I'm like, "Okay, 
There goes the explosion. yeah, but but, but Saxon is living forever. You know that's beside okay. the point. It was hilarious. All right, we're not gonna take up too much of the time. Rose, sorry. So I, I was up and uh, watching stupid TV, and um, I've been upset. So um, you obviously wanted to do a show on the Jetsons, one of my most yes. favorite cartoons. Yes, we, you know, we actually have never done a full dedicated show to the Jetsons. So I thought it was uh, high time to do so. I and actually, I, before I start talking about the Jetsons, I actually want to play clip number one, which oh. is called Your Safety First. Uh, Your Safety by. First. Yeah. Call me with my pants down. <laughs> it, 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 well, I'll, I'll go ahead and say, Your Safety First was a 1956 promotional cartoon created by the Automobile Bill Factor, uh, fa Manufacturers of America. It's a 13-minute short set in the year 2000 that explains automobiles, new improvements, and comfort and performance. Oh, this should be funny. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, started at one minute, if you could. Oh, sorry. Like, oh, yeah, we skip all those uh, the opening credits. Okay. So. Oh, look, there's a Facebook message coming in from you. Um, all right, That's one cool. more. <laughs> it's because I haven't said anything. Okay, one there minute. We go. Okay, now listen carefully, everybody. Go ahead and roll that beautiful footage. Wow, what a beauty. By golly, I think I'll buy a new car. And say, Melly, how long have I had the old one? <laughs> That's well, what disappoints me of Y2K. You know, we're supposed to have been promised so many things. <laughs> I guess that was Y2K's uh, revenge on us. So, mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, I, it was kind of hard to hear, but the voice of that person, uh, the, the, of that guy, was George O'Hallahan, uh, and he ended up playing George Jetson. And in fact, that 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 uh, little short for the uh, automobile uh, manufacturers of America was the inspiration for the 1962 series, The Jetsons. Oh, excellent. Wow. Excellent. So, so the Jetsons, um, the show originally ran from 1962 to 1963. It was actually a primetime series on ABC. Hmm. It ran for 24 episodes only. It was a complete bust at night because it was up against the wide world of Disney on NBC. Oh, that was ah. cool. So, so the show is the show got shelved, but it was back on the air the following year on their Saturday morning um, lineup. And then for the next two decades, the series jumped around Saturday morning from ABC to, N uh, to CBS to NBC. And it continued to run for that entire time somewhere on television, plus in syndication. Then in 1985, um, the 51 new uh, episodes were created for the series um, in syndication, and that was a run from 85 to 87. So um, 
So there's over, uh, there's about, uh, let's see, five, seven, 74 episodes total of the, of the Jetsons. So um, the Jetsons are a family residing in Orbit City. The city's architecture is rendered in Googie style, and the homes and businesses are raised high above the ground on adjustable columns. George Jetson lives with his family in the Skypad apartments. His wife, Jane, the homemaker, their daughter, Judy, who attends Orbit High School, and their son, Elroy, attends Little Dipper School. And uh, they actually have a housekeeper named Rosie and a dog named Astro. And um, the next clip we have is the Jetsons theme song, which is, everybody knows this song, it's brilliant, and it was composed by Hoyt Merton. <laughs> All right. Here's boy Elroy. Daughter Judy. Jane, your pieces of music ever back yep. back when they when they wrote really good music oh yeah as, as everybody knows Tony <laughs> Curtin has a um long time standing with Hanna Barbera and is best known for his work on Johnny Quest Mark's favorite cartoon of all time wow so yep. <laughs> so um so that was the opening and closing credits to the Jetsons and Did you notice Mm -hmm. I just don't want to bring in about the closing credits on the, uh, sure. the dog walk thing in the one of the very earliest episodes. And I think it was the very first one with Jet Screamer is they they had put a, a fire hydrant on the walker and they would have it go around. OK, so uh, funny. <laughs> yeah. And and at the closing credits, you would they they left the fire hydrant in there. So it would go around it. But I think they got rid of it because of the uh, the costs and time for animation purposes. That's crazy. That's that's really interesting. Um, you know, um, I have an interesting thing that I found out about the Jetsons. Um, everybody knows that um, the famous voices of George and Jane, but they were not the original ones cast for George and Jane. And we'll get into who was cast later on. But originally, um, Maury Amsterdam and Pat Carroll Oh, Maury Amsterdam. Were, were the original voices of George Jetson and Jane Jetson. They um, they only did one episode of voicing, and it never aired because um, they they uh, there was a there was a, some kind of contractual issue with Maury Amsterdam being on the Dick Van Dyke Show and uh -huh. uh, Pat wow. Carroll being on Make Room for Daddy. Right. So so they so they ended up um, both actors ended up filing lawsuits. Um, like twelve thousand dollar lawsuits against Hanna Barbera for breach of contract, but um, uh, I guess that they ended up losing that because uh, um, Pat Carroll basically, I guess, inferred later on it, it, that, that that they lost that lawsuit. So, so they, so you never get to hear them as the voices, but instead they asked George O'Hanlon, 
who who did the voice in Your Safety First to reprise, well, not actually reprise because the character is totally different, but to voice George Jetson. Now, uh, George O'Hanlon, um, he was born in, on, in November of 1912 in Brooklyn, New York. And he was best known before the Jetsons as uh, Joe McDotes. Uh, he played Joe McDotes in a series of shorts. And uh, he also played opposite Barbara Eden on How to Marry a Millionaire. And he guest starred on I Love Lucy. Uh, but And so I have a clip of uh, uh, George O'Hanlon uh, as Joe McDotes. And if you want to go ahead and run that for a little bit, and we'll, we'll see who the real George Jetson is. <laughs> I've seen this before. I had not until last week. I didn't put the two and two together. George O'Hanlon was George Jetson. I've seen yep. it. I've seen this clip. get a television set? Television set? We can't afford a TV set. But the Warburton's have a television set, and he doesn't make as much money as you do. Alice, television is nothing but radio with eye strength. But television is gradually replacing entertainment, and... Alice, look, I'm not going to sit home every night and watch commercials. If I want to buy something, I'll go to the store and buy it. Besides, I like privacy in my living room. There'll be no TV set. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. I'll get a set. We can watch TV in the poor house. Stop your crime. Do you really mean it, Joe? I said it, didn't I? Okay, then. Surprise! Well, I'm going to shoot an to help me install my television set. Uh, all right, Joe. I'm, I'm an expert, expert on television, television, you know. Yeah, but do we, we have, have to take, take out every part? part? Well, you, you want, want it to work, work right, don't you? Can you imagine? <laughs> this is a well-known cartoon voice too. I just don't know his name. Ooh. You know how much voltage is in that thing? Who? The the, the picture tube. Used to work I remember with them. them being very heavy. They were very heavy. They're also they also have thousands of volts in them. Okay, I guess we can stop it. I just want you all to get the, if you could hear the voice of the George O'Hanlon there. Gotcha. Uh, so that is George O'Hanlon. And um, actually, the he ended up passing away during the productions of the Jetsons movie in 1989. Oh. Uh, so they had to get another actor to, to fill in and finish for the film. Oh, too bad. Wow. Yep. But that, that's George O'Hanlon, and he plays George Jetson. And so I've got a George Jetson clip coming up. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know? so, so, you know, I think George is like the true patriarch of like, <sighs> he's like one of the best patriarchs of any cartoon series, uh, you know, uh, alongside Fred Flintstone, of course. Well, I mean, he's very, it's very, it's very 1950s uh, Americana skit sitcom, the Jetsons. It's on a read show kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. You know, leave it to Beaver, et cetera. Uh, did you, you know, know that George Jetson only worked an hour a day, two days a week, and he still oh, thought he was overworked? <laughs> he is. Oh, my God. And his, he complains about his button pushing finger all the time. Yeah. Okay. I, I was, uh... Oops. Okay, you ready for the clip? Yeah, go ahead and roll it. All right. Where are my shoes? Right in front of you, dear, where they're supposed to be. Well, I just want to be sure. Yesterday I walked out of it with my shoes on my ears. <laughs> 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 I want one. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. 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 This is a school day, huh? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, he'll be tickling. Here, Here I go. Time to go play with your dog now. Oh, 
I was going to say, George is wrong. His worst thing is, is, is being covered in cat hair, not dog hair. <clears throat> but, you know, geez. Um, you know, you know, as, as a mom, I got to ask you this, because I know I saw this. When, when Gwen went to kindergarten, the very first day she went to kindergarten, she acted almost like Astro with the exception of the licking part. You know? <laughs> Kids are I, I don't always want... excited the first time they go to school and then uh late in later it's years down... they don't want, you, you don't want to go. <laughs> yeah, it's downhill after that, you know. But yeah, it, it, you know what's what's funny is is like I said, you know, George is so so much the, the stereotypical nineteen fifties sitcom dad. You know? He he really is. He he really is. Uh, wow. I really I really enjoy uh George. He's like one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Favorite it, comment. Uh, I'm sorry, Sage made this comment which was appropriate to the picture that I just happened to pull up. Tony Stark must have watched the Jetsons <laughs> when he was little. Yeah. <laughs> he probably did. You know, uh, uh, there's a lot of things in the Jetsons that are inspired today, but we still don't have that push button technology, which I wish we did. It would make life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, but we are, you know, we are pushing buttons. You know, if you look at your keyboard, you know, you are pushing buttons a lot of times for your job, you know. Yeah, and, and I guess in some ways we've surpassed it because, you know, if you have the Alexa, you can tell them to turn the lights on and off, you know. There you and, go. So, but, so but yeah. If you, but if you think about it, when the time that this was made in 1962, we were a serious manufacturing economy, okay? And what George is doing is basically an information technology or remote uh, um, technology also. So we have kind of gotten parts of the Jetsons' um, lifestyle. You yeah, know? so many people working from home now, you know. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and and they still complain. I, I I work with people who are working from home now, not not with me, not at my office, but at other places, and they're it, it's still really chaotic, it, it, you know, because a lot of people, you know, right now because of the coronavirus, people are working from home, and uh, it can it's still it's not smooth. It's a really kind of messy situation when you've not been used to doing that, you know. Oh. Uh, all the time. I, no? I did it for five years and I hated it every second of it. You guys realize George has no butt? <laughs> no, no, he, he really has a butt. He's got a flat. He has, he's got a very tiny, tiny butt. Oh, is it just me? I, it does, <laughs> does nothing for me. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm just, uh, Okay, I'm done. So, so we've met George Jetson. So now we're going to talk about uh, and meet his boy Elroy. Now, yeah, uh, in a lot of uh, cartoons, young boys are usually um, portrayed by females, uh, female voice actors, but not Elroy. Elroy was actually, um, he, he was performed by Dawes Butler, a very famous uh, voice actor. Um, Dawes Butler was born in 1916 in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, he wanted to be a cartoonist but uh, after World War II, he ended up um, spending his life voicing uh, Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, Quick Draw McGraw, Snagglepuss, Jinx the Cat, Dixie the Mouse, and Augie Doggy for Hanna-Barbera, just to name a few. And Elroy was one of those that he voiced. And so um, I have a clip of an interview that somebody did with him in his home studio. Um, if you would like to go ahead and play some of that, the, the, the beginning is that I'm walking up to the house. So you can just like just fast forward a little bit into where they get into the inside the house. So <laughs> maybe like a minute in, maybe. A minute in? Yeah, let's try a minute in. Yeah, that's good. And, uh, 
Society, and that's quite a poem. So, I mean, June Foray has gotten one, Mel Blanc, me eventually, and uh, it's nice to have. Now, this is the coffee. You know, I have a workshop why I don't charge too much, and I have coffee and cookies, and, uh, and this is smart pictures. These are commercial shots of actors and actresses. And uh, let's see. This is the little ice box for the Cokes. Uh, more pictures. This is my animal collection here I've had for years. Uh, I always like liked animals. animals. And some, some are bronzes, bronzes, some are wood, some are harder materials. Some are quite valuable, some are just nice little animals. But it's a wonderful collection and it's at some time, it could be worth an awful lot of money. I'm not concerned with that now because I enjoy having it. And uh, this is kind of interesting, not this particular one. This is a puppet that nobody's ever seen. But in working with students sometimes, uh, the hardest thing to do is to get them to relate, to listen. And they talk too fast. This is, this is like a disease. All actors or prospective actors fall into that trap. They want to show how good they can read. Well, if you get something like this, it's like uh, putting a governor on your car, you know? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Who's this chap? Hmm? Who's this chap? Oh, this, this chap here? That's, uh, that's, uh, Bill. Bill. Bill what? You've forgotten his name, haven't you? No, I haven't forgotten his name. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. What's his name? Quickly, quickly. What's his last name? Simpson! Simpson. <laughs> well, he locked out, you see. But you know this, that I have to control my jaws because they have to coincide with his. He is moving his lips. He's not a ventriloquist. I don't know what you are, but you're not a ventriloquist. I'm, uh, well, shall I tell him my name? Might as well. My name is Posh. I'm a very erudite, well-educated rabbit. This is when and, you put uh, daddy in a home. <laughs> I'm sort of the head man. There's nothing else, you see. Just a head man. That's enough. You've done enough. That's enough. Okay, that's enough. But that's just an example. <laughs> of, <laughs> thank you. But, but, but you know, the thing is, is that he taught a lot of those people on the wall. He was he he taught them voice acting. He, he like before he passed away in 1988, he was uh, people would come to his home and they wanted to learn from him because he is one of the masters of uh, of voice. Yeah, I love Dawes. Dawes is. is uh... Incredible. Amazing, amazing. It's so versatile because you know Elroy doesn't sound anything like Yogi. No, no it, it's it's good that he, he it sounds like a, a you know a little small boy, and uh, for a full grown adult to to voice that that's that's pretty incredible. Yep. So why don't we go ahead and you have that Elroy clip coming up here? I love Elroy. Elroy's like probably my favorite character on the show because he's just so adorable. He's not your child. Uh, it, it, well, yeah, he, 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 you know, he, he's much more well behaved. But in this clip, they don't think he's being well behaved. So <laughs> they, they, you know, so um, let's go ahead and see what trouble Elroy's gotten into today. All right. Oops, excuse me for a sec. Click here. Then click there. I'll never get over it. Four D's and an F and an H. Elroy, how could you? But Mom, Pop, I'm telling you, there's been a serious mistake. That's right, a serious mistake. Well, there's no mistaking this. And, and may I, I urge your you parents to come to class so that we may discuss your son's atrocious conduct. Perhaps a good military school on Mars might be the answer to this. <coughs> a Martian military school? Yeah, maybe that's what he needs. A little. After all, all he did was fail. Fail every subject. Oh, we can always move to another class. Please. 
<laughs> okay, I guess we can end it around there. <laughs> supper pills, I noticed. Can you, can you believe that they were sent to bed without supper? You know, that these days they call it, you know, Elroy just get on the phone and call DCF, you know. <laughs> My parents are, are, are starving me to death. I was, sent, I was sent to bed without supper a couple of times. We're getting some reverb on the uh, on the videos. Did you guys yeah. ever you all hear, hearing well, that? It's like somebody yeah. has their sound up. Yeah, my sound is off. I've got everything off on mine. But, yeah, yeah I was just, that's kind of odd. I'll try to meet everybody the next time around, see if that helps. But uh, yeah. that, wherever you got these clips, these are really cool. That shows uh, the and, uh, they're drawn. Wait a minute. I thought you, oh, the, uh, oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Those, uh, uh, yeah, the, the photos there. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it, it, normally you rarely see the back of someone's head. Yeah. You know, animation. And there is a drawing of the back of Elroy or Elroy's head. That's pretty cool. And, you know, what's funny about the back of his head is it's almost like he's wearing a yarmulke. Yeah, know? I know. It does. That, that little cap. Then if you look yeah. at the side view, you know, like it fits right in. If you took that hat off, its hair would probably be in that shape too, like a cone. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that little curly cue is part of his hair too. Maybe that's a strand of hair or something. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, you know, what's funny about Elroy is that you know he's he's the boy genius of the family. Yes. And yeah. and he he does a lot of interesting stuff. And um, but yeah, he it's it's weird. You always seem to have you always seem to have to have this adolescent genius in the cartoons. You know, for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, but he wasn't annoying. You know, some of these kid geniuses, you know, you Whoa. just want to pull your hair out. You know, you, like a, uh, you know, like Scrappy Doo, for example. Yeah. 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 He wasn't. He wasn't considered a whiner, although in this scene he was because he's being punished. So you understand that. But otherwise, he's he's normally solving the problems, you know, or bringing some logic to the whole situation, you know. Yeah, one of yeah. my favorite episodes with Elroy, and I, I wish I would have uh, been able to find it, was the one where they go camping. And basically, uh, George, I think George gets sick, uh, uh, space sickness or something, and Elroy just has to basically take over and uh, and and run the mission, you know, with the with the with the, with the scouts on the moon. Yeah, uh, yeah, they go to the moon. Um, yeah, it, it's funny how you, you're talking about favorite episodes. I'm going to interject here a bit because I didn't sure. see it on your list, but yeah, it's not on your list. One of my favorite episodes when George got the indestructible suit. <laughs> so, remember that he was trying to come uh show off this indestructible suit i think it was for his boss yeah and uh they were firing rockets at him you know uh, uh chainsaws uh you know boulders on it and, and 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 nothing would happen to this suit until jane washes it <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember what you're talking about now. Doesn't it like fall apart in the wash or yeah, something? It yeah, it does. Fall apart, you know, just 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 because of uh, her washing it, you know. Yeah, so, and they all and they all thought and they all thought it was because of Elroy's pill that yeah. they had taken, you yeah. know. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I noticed uh, that too. Audio. So. Hey, you know what? That could be me. I have no earphones on. No earplugs. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, I just realized it. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no, okay. no, no, figure out what's going on. And yeah, that could be me because that's the reason why I wear earplugs. And like I you said, know, I've been up since two. So, I mean, the Jetsons, the Jetsons really have entered our iconic, you know, imagery of what we think the future is supposed to be. Yes, you know. And and you know, and there's all sorts of fun, fun craziness as to you know, uh, the fan theories are, are are hysterical about certain things like. You know, the there's an, been an environmental disaster down on the ground. That's why everything is up. You know, um, like climate change or something. Um, oh yeah, you know, I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. If you think about it, why, why, why are they on stilts? Basically, you yeah. Know, why, why are these apartments on stilts? Well, you know, the the polar ice caps melted, so everything's flooded. So we just raise everything up. There you um, go. Yeah, and it, and it's and it's the, the the apartments the way that they're set up like is if it's raining. They just go to a higher uh, part of the atmosphere to avoid, you know, to, to have perfect weather all the time. Yeah, I, yeah. Can't, I can't design that crap, folks. Sorry. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, we, we were okay. we were hoping you'd be the you know the big architect that would get us all up there. No, I, I take it back. I can design it. I have no I have no idea how you're going to build it. That's on you, Mister Contractor, sir. <sighs> Those pylons would have to be pretty deep, you know. 
Yeah. Well, still you know what? They could do it like, uh, you know, where they are in it, like the tubes are inside each other so that, you know, that they like, ex like an extender, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like the fake, uh, you know, Jedi. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, story, exactly. Yeah. Just, <laughs> go higher, okay. <laughs> so you snapped the apartment, right? And everybody shifted over to one side or something, right? <laughs> Forget that. I want, what I want is, I want that chair when you get in the house, it just sort of goes around the house and, you know, you oh. get stuff. You I, know? I, I want that whole clip that George had, you know? Getting the slippers on when he comes home, the seat reclined, to get a massage. Yeah. Hey, uh -huh. you know what, Terry? I just saw Terry's comment, and I really thought it was really interesting. Is if the design for Bespin, aka Cloud City, uh, yeah. in, in return in uh, Empire Strikes Back, was uh, inspiration from? I could, I, I could absolutely see that. You know, Cloud yeah. City. How else would us Cloud City look? And there you go. That's that's. Uh, what was the Jetsons' apartment name? Uh, I think it was Skypad Apartments. Actually. Skypad Apartments, yep. Skypad, okay, yeah. So that's Bespin. Bespin was Skypad. But but here's the other question: is, is I want to know how they did the car folding up into a, a briefcase that he can carry. Yes, and and that's what I would love to have walking into my office every day. <laughs> well, you know that similar idea was used on uh, what what is that uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, where oh, they had a, a, the building and, sure. and he had it in a briefcase. Yes, and I love it how they would throw the building and then it would enlarge, and there you go, man. Hey, yeah. I can find that. And also oh. a similar thing on uh, the Dragon Ball, uh, Dragon Ball Z, they, they had these little capsules that they would throw and turn into houses and cars and it'd just be like a capsule, you know? So when, when is that going to happen? <laughs> but um, so back to the Jetsons, okay. we've, met, we've met George, we've met Elroy, his son. So now we're going to meet his daughter. Uh, played by Janet Waldo. And Janet B Waldo, um, she was born in 1919 in Yakima, Washington. Uh, she began her career as an actress, starting off in bit roles, but she had two leading lady roles in Westerns alongside Tim Holt. Um, she also played on uh, Ozzie and Harriet as a recurring character, a teenager by the name of Emmy Lou. Uh, so she had bit parts in different television series she never really made it as a big time actress until she started doing voice work and um she voiced uh she voiced uh originally judy um jetson and she also voiced um nancy and suzanne penelope pitstop and josie and the pussycats i was really looking for an interview with her and i really i couldn't find anything but i did find this really cute clip that somebody took of her um, uh, off the street when uh, they were talking, uh, she was like in line for something, and they asked her a question about Jet Screamer. So if you have that, that like, <laughs> short clip. Oh, and I also wish you you had, you had told me that uh, interview. I played uh, her interview on one of our shows in the past. Oh, did you? I couldn't. I couldn't find. I, I was looking and looking. Yeah, probably. Well, let's let this one run. And this one is how long is this one? This one. Oh, real, real short, but it's cute. Twelve seconds. Yeah. Stand by. Okay, Janet, we need you to do it by Jet Screamer. Oh! Well, Jet Screamer! He's the greatest! Oh, we have got to hear that again. <laughs> oh, hold on. Okay, Janet, we need you to do it by Jet Screamer. Oh! Well, Jet Screamer! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that is, is awesome. great. That is freaking awesome. Oh, oh Jet Yeah, just someone with their, with their phone camera. Just, you know. <laughs> and I, she, I she, love, she just hops right in. Oh so I, I love the fact that she was willing to do it. Yeah, you know? she, she, yeah you're right. She, she's not one of some of the actors that say, oh, no, that, that was in my past. I don't do that well, anymore. I'm so right, sorry. Right, no. Right, she went yeah. right into character. Well, I you know that's that's amazing. She's she's an amazing actress. Yeah, she she was also very versatile, and you you know you couldn't tell that she was Josie and Penelope. Also, you know, she had that just like really unique teenage girly voice. You yes, know? yeah. Yes. Oh my god. Oh, that's 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 great. That was incredible. I like that. 
so we got a Judy Jetson clip uh, uh, for you, oh, too. My bad. Didn't have it queued up yet. So give me. Yes, that's number eight. Stand by, please. As I push a lot of buttons. The guy that invented the mouse for the computer is an absolute genius, but sometimes he uh, takes it by surprise. <laughs> oh, what makes me crazy is when you have to do it with your finger on the on those laptops. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, every time you, when you drag the mouse across your screen, you think you're you're traversing a desert here, but it really isn't. It's just, what if we didn't have it, right? Here we go. Oh, Rosie, you darling, beautiful girl. Afternoon, Miss Judy. Learn this exercise in school. We're dancing, Rosie. Maybe you are. All I'm doing is winding up my string. I'm in love. I'm dizzy. In love again? For the absolutely last time. Oh, he's simply the utmost, Rosie. The utmost. Sure. Just like the last one. Love. Not. Beep, beep, Rosie, love, tra-la-la-la-la. For you, tra-la-la-la. To me, nonsense. <laughs> you, you know, there's a sad story about Janet Waldo. Um, and I think I'd mentioned it before on the show, but it's worth mentioning again. Um, in 1990, they did Jetsons the movie. And Janet actually did the entire uh, voice work for uh, Judy Jetson for that film. At the last minute, the studios wanted to get somebody uh, young and hip, and they wanted a hip soundtrack. So they end up hiring Tiffany. Oh, God. I think mm -hmm. they're, they're, you know, I think you're alone. She does all the songs for the movie. Okay. She does some, a, few, a few of the songs, anyway, on the soundtrack. And they ended up, as part of the deal, she ended up doing redoing the voice of Judy Jetson. So you don't get to hear Janet Waldo do that voice in the 1990s film. I really wish they would come out with like a side version of it and, and plug her voice back in because, you know, I, I mean, you know, not to di diss Tiffany, but come on, you know, yeah. it, it's really sad. I mean, she is, she, you know, Janet Waldo was the voice of Judy Jetson. It was really not fair, but that was the studio's decision and uh um you know pretty well, that, sad, was an, actually. that was an attempt to get box office you know they were yeah. looking to the boost box office receipts on that yeah. but i mean having tiffany do the songs that's a standard practice having someone else do the singing from an actor i mean you go all the way back i mean there's there's discussions of some of the musicals back in the, in the 30s and the 40s of the actors being the actual person who does the dialogue and the body and all that but then they have someone else do the voice for the singing and that's a known, they, they do that all the time. And nobody minds that because that's pretty much, you know, a lot of actors can't carry a tune, you know, right. in, in a bucket. But doing what they did was just so wrong. As a matter of fact, um, I, 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 I'm sure you read the same thing, but Adrian Romano, who was the voice uh, direct casting, uh, she quit because of this. I did not know that. Well, I actually, actually, what is it? It says here, she removed her name from the finished film, which is the same as quitting, because then you know you, having your name on the film is, is basically your resume. And yeah. she later on on to do the uh, voice casting for all of a lot of the the DC Comics um, animation in the '90s and the 2000s. At some um, point, we ought to do like a whole episode on Andrea Romano. She just recently retired. She, I think Voltron was the last show she was working <coughs> on. She retired. Oh, uh, she she like she knew how to pick pick a voice, you know. Um, yeah, but yeah, you're right with her. Yeah, we should talk about that um, after the show. But yeah, so I mean, this really had some real impact because I read somewhere else that it was not only just um, was, was it um, Janet that got let go, but somebody else got let go in that same picture. And I just, I can't find out who it was. I remember reading it, but I don't remember who it was. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, uh, <coughs> Mel Blanc was working on it. And so was George O'Hanlon. And they both passed away during the, the making of it. Um, so, let's see. So, yeah. so they had to be replaced, but uh, I don't know if anybody else who was let go from it. I just, I know, you know, the famous Tiffany thing, you know, Tiffany was trying to break into acting 
And um, she ended up doing, I think, I know she did a movie for sci-fi because I watched it. She did it with Debbie Gibson and it was hilarious. But she ne her, her uh, acting career never took off, I think, the way she wanted it to. <laughs> yeah. Dawes Butler died just before the film. Okay, so... Yeah, he died in 88, and the film was, I think they started filming and uh, doing the voice work and stuff in 89, and the film came out in 1990. Yeah, right, right. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else to see here about right. this. Real quick so, before yeah. we move on, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, give props to our uh, parent company here, Hanging With The Show, HWWS. Uh, I invite everyone to go to their Facebook page, HWWS as in Sam, take a look around. Um, but we uh, are thankful for them for providing us a lot with um, the, uh, the locale for broadcasting. I also wanna note, uh, note that we are live on our YouTube channel, the Saturday Morning Cartoons, as we speak, uh, not only on the Facebook page here, I'll, my Facebook page personally, but uh, we are on uh, the Saturday Morning Cartoons. So I employ people to go and, and subscribe to that page too. And uh, you can watch them on both platforms there. And we will continue on with the Jetsons. This next item that you're going to bring up, Rose, yeah. I had no idea. I didn't either. I, I it blew my mind it. <laughs> because we have always, and it's been like a Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Do these shows come on as well as the um, Ma and Paul Kettle series as well, which I used oh, to love. Right. And this came on, and you're going to let you go ahead and discuss it. Sure. Um, so we're, we're to Jane, the uh, George's wife, uh, and and she is played by uh, actress Penny Singleton. Uh, Penny Singleton, she was originally born as Mariana Dorothy McNulty. You can see how that doesn't really work, you know, as, a, <laughs> as, a, as an actress, you know. Oh, it's Mariana McNulty. Who? You know, Penny Singleton. Oh, that, that sticks. And she was born in, on September 15th, 1908 in Philadelphia. Um, she started her career off very early in vaudeville. And, um, but later on, she became known for a very famous series of um, movies uh, called Blondie. And Blondie uh, was based on the comic strip Blondie. And there was, uh, I think that it was uh, around maybe t between 27 and 30 movies. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but she. A and, lot, and, a lot, a lot, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, to the point where they, they air a lot on, uh, when I was growing up, they aired on Sunday morning or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, early Saturday. Right. And, uh, you know, along with uh, Abbott and Costello and, you yeah. know. Uh, I love uh, them, man. Characters. And so, so, um, I have a clip of her singing uh, in one of the Blondie movies because she was very she was a very versatile actress. She she also did a lot of singing and and um, and she sang in Blondie. So here's a clip from one of her Blondie movies. Oh, I think Everybody you caught him off there? guard. Yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. still here. <laughs> I think I think Rose caught you off guard. It's just all this damn. Yeah, uh, I did. Uh, yeah, you know, all this <laughs> clicking but, that I got to do. Um, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead with the blondie. Oh God, not a dog shoot. Jerome used to sing like that. Yes, I did. Dead on those tight pants. <laughs> oh, dog on it. I thought you said she was singing in this. That's what I thought yes. so too. She did it at some point. <laughs> oh, she, oh, well, I can help you out. Let's find where she is. There, there she is. is. There she is. There's Penny Singleton. <laughs> I think he's back to the choir. I was actually enjoying the music. <laughs> <laughs> 
shade of the old apple tree. Oh, I remember this episode. This this, this, this episode. I want to say. Quiet. <laughs> Hit him, Jane. Of course, that's not Jane. <laughs> Please, play in the shade of the old apple tree. I'm afraid we don't know it. Oh. Mommy! Hey! We know tree! Baby dumpling. Sure. It won't do. It has to be apple. All right. I don't know how much good it'll do, but play it anyway. I know this song. <laughs> As a tree. There's Dagwood. Oh, the eyebrow went up. Oh, wow, that guy on the end is uh, from Iowa. Yes. <laughs> yes, Fred Mertz, William Crawley. A tree that looks at God. Yeah, it is. And lift her. Dag was sitting next to his boss. His name is Mr. Dithers. Yes. Forgot the dog's name. Not that dog, but the uh, fluffy one. Oh, did they really? Oh well. Oh well. Like you said. That dog. Of her. <laughs> oh no, she's pretty. <laughs> Penny Singleton, right? Yep, Penny Singleton. And then she can rock it later on when she does the uh, Bill yep. Haley. Yep. The whole reason why I found this is I was trying to find out if that is, you know, if that was Penny Singleton was singing that song, and it turns out that she did. She did do yeah. the Bill Paisley song. I just never put two and two together with her. I, I never had a clue. This was like the most exciting part, I think, of, of what I found out was that because, you know, she uh, those Dagwood uh, Blondie films, you know, were a big part of my childhood, too. Man, she was smoking back then, wasn't she? Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, I was, man. I was young when I was watching these series <laughs> when they came on. But it, it's, it's, it was fantabulous. So. So Penny Singleton did voice uh, Ju uh, uh, Jane. Jane Jane Jensen all the mm -hmm. way through. Uh, she did the 1990s movie. She did that voice. Wow. And unfortunately, she passed away in the, in 2003. But she was mm -hmm. in her 90s by then. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, she lived a good long life. She had a, a brilliant career, both as you know an actress and a voice actress. Um, you know, so um, good for her. You know, she and she's so she is very beautiful. She's such a beautiful. 
person. So we can assume that in your next clip, uh, which I'm not going to spoil, that she sang that as well. Do you think? Because that sounds yes, like a yes, totally yes, different yeah, voice. She, yeah, yeah, she's she's she does a really hot number. Probably one of the ones that she's probably Jane Jetson's most famous for. So okay. go ahead and run that uh, song if you got it. Uh oh, you make sure that's the right one because I don't. Uh, think I'm either. wondering. Hold on. Uh, I think I think that one. I think that's the. Um, Stand by. I'm on it. Yeah, that's Blondie. That's the Blondie clip. And it uh, should be the one, the next one. But um, I, I, I really say stand by. <laughs> what happened to Jerome? He went. Yeah, he'll be back. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. This was during a masquerade, and George has no clue who yeah, that, that it's his wife performing. <laughs> I wonder what she does for a encore. Here's our next talented contestant, Miss Western Hemisphere. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here in friendly Venus City. I I hope someday you people will come down to Earth. That voice. I'm sure I've heard it before. <laughs> oh, nah. Just wishful thinking, I guess. I'd like to sing an old American folk ballad that's been handed down for generations. Hit it, fellas! <laughs> Somebody's got to be in the PTA. You're out there in space, but who knows what place? You basically won't you please fly. You got some legs. Please try. Fly home. <laughs> <laughs> of course, before we crown you, you must remove your mask. <laughs> George! Oh, uh, honey, I thought that you, you, you told me when you came in that you were going down to the... That was awesome. That was freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's what they played that episode a lot in the rotation when I was uh, a kid. I saw that so much. <laughs> you, you know that they did. You know that this is one of those scenes where they did uh, predict the future. I mean those those tiny boots she was wearing weren't those really nineteen nineties style? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> they were. Hold on, let me see. Oh, when, she's, when she's when she's singing up there, you can see she's basically got those those anklet bootlets. You know, they go up to her ankles. About you know. Cool. So, so um, to round everything off, um, the Jetsons, you know, for whatever reason, they never made a Jetsons live action like they did the Flintstones. Yeah. And, and and you know, the thing is, I can understand back, you know, maybe in the seventies and eighties, they didn't have, you know, the money or the way to do it. But now it could easily be done with CGI, and I'm surprised it hasn't been. Uh, a live action version of the Jetsons um, made, you know, truly. Well, um, would you want to see them with modernized uh, equipment or appliances or amenities in, in a live action movie, or would you want to 
stick to some of the clunkier classic uh, renditions of spaceships and and even the video really screen cool, here. the way the way that it is the the way that it was made you know the way it was intended you know well, there, are certain, there are certain aspects you could mix and merge i mean you don't need to do like the big screen like you see here you could do it as a flat screen right exactly you know mm -hmm. um you know nobody everybody loves cars with fl with fins on them i don't care what anyone says you know and you can still do it with a flying car, which is what, you know, with the little bubble. I mean, sure, it looks like a gremlin, but, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the flying cars part, the, the complaining about doing, you know, um, the big screen where your boss is on. I mean, come on. Some of us have seen that in work. The like, thing with the uh, live-action Flintstone movie is you can't upgrade anything because that was the beginning of all of it. Right. <laughs> you get my drift. Stop, stop yeah. using logic, Mark. Uh, I know. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that's how I am. But and um, it's easy. I think it's easier to do a Flintstone style film because you can, you know, there's so much they can play off of from the and, and the series basically ran longer and was actually more popular. Um, but you know, you're dealing with old timey, you know, uh, what it, prehistoric, you but, know, what they imagine it to be. And it's sort of the same. Like and this is sort of the same way of how they rebooted Star Trek. Of course, they didn't have the square, clunky-looking dials and buttons on, you know, the console. They upgraded it to what we would imagine as being the future. As the right. future. Back in the '60s, those things were the future. But the retro, the retro future, which is what the the um, Jetsons would be, is actually quite popular. Look at the LA um, airport, uh, LAX airport. That's Look at that very. Airport. But yeah. <laughs> but but they talk about there's like a restaurant in there that's very retro futuristic as they call what you're looking at with the Jetsons now. And that's a very popular look. Um, that's been coming back for a while. And, and if you go into the fashion magazines, especially in, you know, you deal with interior design sometimes, Mark. Oh, don't say that word. <laughs> you notice that some of that stuff is starting to make a comeback. Oh that, yeah. That look. So. Most definitely. I think, I think, I think it could be pulled off Rose. I think they could do it. I think they would just have to be, you know, not faithful, but at least respectful of the source material. And, and, you know, I think there would be an audience for it, too. I mean, for years and years, they had the that um, Jetsons ride at Universal, you know, mm -hmm. that was very popular. Yeah. Well, it's really a Hanna-Barbera thing, but mostly yeah, yeah. it was the Jetsons. Which I um, actually enjoyed. I rode that ride many times because I like the fact that we were on a rescue mission trying to save... Uh, Elroy, who was kidnapped by Dick Dastardly from Wacky Races, you know, <laughs> you're literally sitting in a chair, and the chair goes up and over as you're watching the screen of Elroy being literally dragged through the air uh, by Dick Dastardly's flying machine, and you have Yogi and everybody else coming to the rescue. So it was a fantastic ride. I really it was a great that. ride. You know, it was a staple at Universal Florida for years, and I yes, think it now was. it's what it's the Minions now. I think. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, I haven't it's, been there it's, in so long, so I'm not sure now. No, that that building, yes, that building is Dominion's. You're right. You're right. It is so, Dominion's. So, speaking of the Flintstones and the Jetsons, you know, there was a couple of crossovers with, between, between the two of them. Mm -hmm. I knew yes, of one. I didn't know about the other one. Oh, yes. The uh, Jetsons went back into the past to, to meet Fred Flintstone and family. Right, because Elroy invented a time machine. Yes. Oh. Okay. And then I think they did a reverse one where the Flintstones came forward. I, I haven't seen that one. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. I think that's what happened. I got to go check. But there's that. Um, and I mean, and then there was preludes to that. Um, to to that, there was an episodes where the Flintstone, where Fred was. I guess it turned out to be a dream. But it was so much like the Jetsons' future that yeah. uh, Fred was in. Um, yeah. So there was lots of that. But there was there was definitely a crossover between the Flintstones and the Jetsons. I really hope they do a live. Uh, action version of the Jetsons, and if they do, I want them to do that favorite episode of mine where he had the invincible suit, and then subject the, the the suit, of course, George in the suit to you know nuclear explosions and you know uh, RPGs and landmines and all that kind of stuff. I'd love to see that, but then again, who am I? Well, I, I hope that someday they they listen to us and and uh, make a film like this. I mean, right now the film industry, as you know, it's uh, everything's up in the air right now. But I just, you know, I'm surprised that it had. I mean, I don't know if it was ever in development and just never happened or uh, or what. But you know, I'm I'm surprised it's taken this long for them to even you know have a, a live action film. But um, before we uh, uh, finish up um, the, in 1986. Um, the song uh, was released on an album 
one of these TV theme song albums. And they actually did a music video that was released for the theme song. And I have that here. Uh, that's our final clip of the day. Uh, next, the final clip of the day. Uh -oh. oh, okay. <laughs> gonna, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Uh, Mark Mark's got a surprise for us, folks. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm, I'm I'm typing here. Sorry. Uh oh. Mark's up to no good. I, I wonder what this could be. Well, I, I'm just gonna say <laughs> shame. I'm gonna say shame on you. But um, let's go to your last clip. Okay. And uh, where is it? There it is. Oh, I already have it on the screen. Okay, so. Here we go. This is the music video. I like this. Awesome sauce. Okay, so do you guys remember? Okay, so you know who we worked for, right? Yeah. Um, um, yes, basically, basically Sparkus. And and their biggest competition was Coswell something or other. Co Cog. Cog. Cogs. Coswell Cogs. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before anybody else says anything else, uh, I'm gonna let uh, Rose end the show after this clip, which mm. I am ashamed. <laughs> I am embarrassed <laughs> that she did not have in her list. How could you ever forget the most famous song that was ever played in Jetson history? He How has a point. Freaking dare you, woman. <laughs> Oops, excuse me. Helps if you hit play. Yes, it does, doesn't it? My baby for a ride in space. Eep, ah, 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 ah. We met a little man with a funny, funny face. Eep, ah, 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 ah. He taught us both to wail this way. Eep, ah, 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 ah. And nobody digs a word we say. That means I love you. I read my baby loud and clear. She just said, I love you, dear. Now, when I reply the way I do, I just said, I love you, too. That means I love you. Fly 
Yes, that's Jet Screamer. The Jet Screamer. Jet Screamer, yes. Jet Those Screamer. Girls got, Those girls got nice legs too. I, I, I liked I liked uh, Janet Waldo when she's like, ah, you know, she's, <laughs> she's <laughs> incredible. Yeah, I don't right. think Tiffany could do it that good. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. Get everybody uh, on the screen here. So that's the show for today. And I hope everybody enjoyed meeting the actual actors behind the Jetson family. As um, usual, your show sucked in the beginning, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made it on the edge of time. <laughs> you came up smelling like roses in the end. So. <laughs> Uh, that, that that was fantastic. I really. Uh, oh, I love the Jetsons. I especially I love the first season of the Jetsons. Yeah. You know? I yeah. I really wasn't a big fan of the later seasons, but boy, that first season made such an impact. Yeah. Well, Rosie and, and, and Jane Vanderpile uh, voiced Rosie the robot. If, if but uh, she she's so much well known for Wilma Flintstone. There's hardly anything about her doing Rosie, which is a shame. Yeah, it is. Or a I would have ha included that as well. Rose, yeah. you forgot you forgot the one of the most important members of the Jetsons. Astro, yes. Astro. Oh, okay. the dog. First, sure. Yeah. And, so, and, yeah. Bob Butler also, I believe. Right. Yeah, he, did, but, he did that, and of course he did Scooby. And one of the reasons Scooby talks the way he talks is because of Astro, because Jetsons was before uh, Scooby Doo. So what was what's Astro's real name? I don't know. Oh, I, mean, I forgot. I it, oh, Trowfaz. There you go. Oh Trowfaz. my God, it sure is. Trowfaz. Yeah, that, 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 I remember that episode because I, I hated the name Trowfaz. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> hated the name Trowfaz. Trowfaz. That's my, yuck. yuck. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that was that was fantastic. So um, everyone's <laughs> praising you right now for a great job. Thank uh, you, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Charles. Yeah, your show sucked. I'm just staying in <laughs> character here. Yeah, yeah but, but 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 your show is next week, isn't it, Mark? Uh, which is going to be incredible. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's going to end up sucking. Suck it's so it's going to end up sucking at the end, of course. But it's going to be <laughs> freaking incredible. In, in fact, I could probably announce it because I haven't really done any research on it <laughs> yet. But I think what I'm going to focus on next week is uh, Warner Brothers Animation. Okay, uh, you know right. the, the Dancing Frog. Um, do you ever remember the, the 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 cartoon where you had the little Martian kid? There was a mix up with Stork or, or the delivery yes. of the child. Mott, yeah. I think his name. I, I want to show that yep. as well, which I did before. But anyway, so um, you 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 guys you, you did an incredible job, bro. Really appreciate it. Um, thanks everybody for joining us this week on Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, We'll see you next week with Warner Brother Animations, okay? Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a good